Hey, everybody. I messed up the other one. Hold on. So come into this one. All right, so who's in here? I am giving you a chance to get back on because when I turned off my timer, I accidentally closed out. So I will give you guys a chance to get back on over here. Sorry. Um, okay, who's asking me, did I mess up again? What'd you mess up? I messed up and closed out of my timer, but I closed out of my whole thing. So I'm back. I'm going to let y'all get in. Hey, Jerry Lynn. Hey, Diane and Nancy. And I had a bunch of people over in the other video. So hopefully they'll figure out I messed up and come back over here. I already did. She couldn't. Anyway, so who else is on here? Um, oh, shoot. Hey, Nancy. So, you guys, Katie, you found us. Yes, yes. Every other Thursday night, we're in this group. The other Thursday night, we're in the Slab to Fab group. Um, I, hey, Theresa, or Threes. Gosh, I will get that. I will be showing that extruder tonight, Katie, um, for you all. Hello from a COVID house. <gasps> Renee, I'm so sorry. Hi, Nancy Jean. Yes, all is well. All is well before, but when I closed out of my timer, I actually closed the whole window. So, oops, I now know not to do that. Hey, Stacy. Yes, the last one you said. The last one I said what? Oh, threes. Yay! I'm excited. I finally am getting that. Um, hey, Peggy. Okay, so tonight we're going to make a fun little project. Um, I showed my slab group a fun little gadget this past week. And um, one of my slab members uh, made a post in this group and everybody was like, oh my gosh, what is that? What is that? So I'm going to show you and I'm going to show you how it works um, towards the end of our evening. Receive my roller today. Those rolling pins are gorgeous. Oh, thank you, Nancy Jean. Um, all right. So what do we have on here now? Okay. Question. On average, how long do orders take to complete ordering a rolling pin? Jerry Lynn, it depends. It depends on how backed up we are. You know, there are just the two of us. We, um, have always and will always make to order. As a small business, you just can't afford to keep a lot of stock, not knowing what somebody may or may not order. Cost of materials have tripled and quadrupled. So we make to order. We've always done that. We work really hard to uh, work within a 10 business day window. That does not include weekends or holidays. Um, we are just a bit behind right now because as we posted, when we ran that sale a few weeks back, we took that week off to try to get the studio back organized after bringing it home. All of the sale um, orders have gone out, but the ones since then are the ones we're working on now. And I, um, So I think we're just a few days over our little 10-day window. But once we catch that back up, we, we tend to pretty much stay in our 10-day window. Hope that answers your question. Hey, Penny Paul. Hey, Barbara. Um, so, 
Stacy says, I love your alphabet set. It is my favorite set. Oh, that's, that makes me feel so good. Um, I asked because we may be moving within the next two months. Oh, well, you can always, uh, when it gets a little closer, you can let me know if I need to change the address. But if you ordered it now, you would certainly have it before two months. Um, Stacy says, small businesses are all backlogged and here comes the holiday. Products are worth waiting for. Stacy, thank you so much for that. Um, we, uh, we are, uh, to who? No, because if you would have read it, Mr. Wilson, it said, because she's wanting to place an order. And Mr. Wilson just came in here. Oh, I don't see an order for Jerry Lynn. He was freaking out. Um, I you did it. yourselves on my order considering, Nancy Jean, you, are, you outdid yourself on my order considering they were shipping to Canada. I have waited much longer for Glaze locally. Oh, that's awesome. Jerry Lynn... Stacy, Nancy Jean, all of you guys, thank you so much for supporting us and all the small businesses. It is tough out there right now for us to get materials, for the cost of materials that have gone up. We've worked hard to keep our prices from going up. Um, oh, wait. Jerry Lynn, you placed it this morning? She said she placed it this morning. Um, he's saying he doesn't see it, but I will look for it. So tonight, let me show you, let me show you what we are going to make tonight without it bending. Fancy schmancy foot, handles, fancy schmancy handles, a double stacked dish, um, and a new wood grain texture. And did you see? I'm afraid I'm going to bend this. Did you see Rocky Raccoon hiding between the planks of the fence? So that's what we're going to make tonight. Um, no, actually, Stacy, this is. Do you have your measuring tape? Or get me a little measuring tape. This, I used the 10 and a half inch uh, rim. It's just the 10 and a half inch rim. Putting the handles on it though, and my handles are kind of sticking sort of straight up. So it is, well, it is 12 inches apart or width. So I think your kiln does not quite make that, but don't put the handles on and you can make this. Um, hi everyone, it sure turned blustery and cool here. Picked all my remaining tomatoes so they don't freeze tonight. <laughs> awesome. Um, where are you at? It's, what is it here? Nice. It's in the 90s here. Um, love it, the shape, and just everything about it. Oh, awesome. So this is my farmhouse template and my solar eclipse forms. So many of you have the farmhouse template. So I've been trying to make the rounds of doing things that a lot of people already have. Farmhouse. This is the 10 and a half. And I double stacked to get that. I want, I was going for that kind of whiskey barrel look. And so I double stacked with my dual drapes, um, the eight and nine and a half. And then it's the 10 and a half rim. And so the dish has this little ripple, which is, I think, set off the raccoon really well. See that? I absolutely love that. Um, hey, Deb Gardner. And so that little ripple effect in there, there are no lines, no pokey things, just a beautiful rounded frame around Rocky Raccoon with the new textured pen. Can you see this? Beersteins, um, big tall tumblers, uh, 
mugs. And I will tell you, I, I lost Rocky. Oh, I put Rocky peeking through this. When you roll it, has planks. There's, you can see the, the lines for the planks. So like a fence or a wood floor. And so I had Rocky peeking through there. But for those of you that have husbands or whatever that, or boyfriends or yourself that loves whiskey, I forgot to put this on the website, but I created the old fashioned whiskey bar, good times, great friends, where everybody gets a second shot. That stamp goes on there gorgeously. This set, I have a set that's got whiskey, bar, a set that says bourbon bar, and then a set that will say wine bar. And with that set, and I forgot to put that set of stamps up there because I was crash, so excited about Rocky, but the stamp set will include uh, the dot and the star that are on the border. So you could go around edges a whiskey bar stamp and down here it says good times good friends and I made good times good great good times great friends that could also be stamped in the border between the dot and this thing so um, because my original plan was to do this dish as instead of a dish as a beer stein a whiskey barrel looking bear sign and then I changed my mind bourbon in Kentucky or I may get shot oops okay so I do have it in bourbon as well so you won't get shot or but you can take a shot right so let's get started oh cool I have those I so I can put together just figure out a wood texture who was saying that um oh okay now you have a wood texture um i just love it so let's get started on this because i know that we have a lot of people wanting to how about beer um a beer stamp i could put beer a beer bar yeah because i can't put brands for sure because there's so many but let's get started on this real quick because we really need to get to the last two videos, which is all about the foot. Look at that foot. And look at those handles. Look at the wood grain in that twisted rope handle. Now, my slab to fabbers that are here tonight, y'all already know how I did that. But I'm going to show you guys how I did that in the very next to the last video. So let's get going. Well, we have a fun project this evening. I am going to compress this really well, real quickly. Just because we always do. Let me flip this over. You definitely want to do both sides. past this part because I'm so excited about this little project that we're going to make this evening. Woohoo! All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use a rolling pin because I'm going to use this rolling pin and I'm going to roll this pin in. I'm going to stand up. I do not use the handles because watch this. See how this spins fine? You press down those handles, it like wants to stop. These rolling pins have a metal bar. They weren't designed to press hard in the clay. They were designed for soft little pie doughs and stuff. So here's what I do. I put it on the edge of my clay and I press down, let me, Move me out of the way for a second. I press down. If the clay starts to roll up, I just kind of grab it 
set it back down, and continue on. keep myself out of the camera but I can't if I have to reach all the way across and I stop at the edge I don't roll off the edge they put me back up here now and look at this oh my gosh but we're not done look at that Look at that texture. Holy cow, is that deep. Now, I'll explain more about this pen when I'm back on the live part. But here, here is, I'm a little crooked. Here is the um, texture that we're gonna use. So let me come back and set up with my forms and templates and a special, several special stamps. Wait till you see this next video. Yes, a soda bar, Jerry Lynn, will work. Um, we are not drinkers either. Uh, may have a beer every once in a blue moon. A beer, because that's more than I can handle. But, soda bar. I could do that with a soda bar. Yes, I can. All right, I'm jumping right into the next video because I want to get through to these last ones. Um, let's see. Let's add Rocky Raccoon. Okay, I have my banding wheel system here on top of my banding wheel, go figure. All right, tonight I'm actually gonna be using my farmhouse template. It is a super, super favorite amongst a lot of people. I am gonna put my nine and a half inch solar form down on here and then i'm gonna actually hold on oh yeah that'll work i'm gonna actually set another form on top so that that's gonna come down and uh drape now i have these in do i have one right here hold on one second Okay, this one happens to be a round, but see it's two layers deep. It's it's the same height as if I did two, two of these, only this is solid, there's no lines in there. And I could use my solar with that's a double height, but for this particular project, I wanted it to be kind of fancy. So I didn't want it just straight. It's gonna kind of go down and be a little on the fancier side. Fancy schmancy. It's my new word of the month, fancy schmancy. So I have that pretty leveled out. Now I'm going to scooch this out of the way for a minute and bring my clay back up here. Okay, I've got my clay up here because I want to do something real quick. Before I put this um, texture on these forms, and I'm gonna I have to think about how I want this texture to go. I want it to go so that the, the dish sets lengthwise. So I'm gonna put it over this way. And before I do that, I want to create a cute little raccoon hiding in the wooden planks or the fence or the whiskey barrel, whatever you wanna call this. Now, because I already have texture here, and I don't want, let's see, I don't know that that's gonna work. Hold on one second, let me test something. Okay, so what I would have to do, what I was thinking was I'd just press the, the smooth side of the stamp in to give myself a spot for this, and then I would press the raccoon, but they're gonna be on opposite sides. 
so what I may do is um, realize, hey, that's not going to work. So what I might want to do is kind of right where I want to put this, kind of in the middle. That's kind of in the middle. I may want to take my little rubber tip tool. Do I have that kind of centered? Yeah, this would be centered. Up and down. All right, so what I'd want to do is very lightly go around with my rubber tip tool because I'm going to impress a stamp into the texture. Now I can see where that is. So I'm going to take my red rib and kind of flatten some of this out a little bit so that my little raccoon, where did I put that? My little raccoon can go in here. I'm gonna have to be very cautious what I will do is I will create another stamp, which is just this with the flat smooth side. So I would have been able to stamp that in, made it smooth, and then stamp my raccoon in instead of going through all this. But I didn't for this. So I'm just going to smooth this out slightly. And it doesn't have to be perfect because there's a lot of texture in this raccoon. How's that? Woohoo! <laughs> I got a little bald spot. Now, I smoothed it out a bit. Now, I'll put this back where I can see. Now, what I did not do, I, I did just slightly wet this. And so I'm going to cornstarch this really well because it's hot off the press. Okay, I have my cornstarch and just gonna take this old makeup brush and I'm gonna dab this in here. It's the first time it's been used. So I'm gonna dab it in very, very, very generously like this. And then I'm going to come over my trash can and kind of tap out this excess. Like that. My corn starch away off to the side. All right. Now I'm going to take my little raccoon and I'm going to lay him where I had him impress. And being fresh off the press, I hope he doesn't stick because I haven't used him. Whew. Oh, that's perfect. Look at the raccoon! And everything came out. All right. There's my raccoon peeking. You can see these are wood panels like a wooden fence. Or I can make this into a tumbler or a mug. I could cut this into a mug like this. Have a top and bottom. Um, I can... This will fit like the big... 30 ounce skinny tumblers, which would make, could you imagine this as a mini tumbler? I haven't done a whole lot of quasi masculine stuff, but I think this will qualify. All right, let's come back and drape this all over our forms. Okay, um, 
Stacy, please refresh and tell me if you're still seeing that. I just looked while that video was playing and I'm not seeing it. So if you still see it again, please take a picture and send it to me so I can figure out what's going on there. I would so appreciate that. Um, grandchildren, this video, the replay will always be here. You blink, those grandchildren are gonna be in college. So spend your time with those grandkids. I blinked, mine are graduating high school. Um, who said that? Oh, Melody. <laughs> Melody, I bet you're right. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Stacy. I need to see where you're seeing that. Um, okay. So now let's add the clay to the forms. Okay. I have my forms all ready up there and I'm going to gently grab my clay and turn it over and I can actually see where the raccoon is but what I like to do is come across here where I can actually see ex I can see he's the raccoon's right there in the middle so I'm gonna very lightly press this down because I don't want my forms to move because they're not all connected I had stamps and stuff stuck underneath my banding wheel so that it wouldn't spin on me while I was doing that. Now, what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna take my little red rib and I'm gonna lightly go around because I do have lots of texture on this so I do want to be careful, but I want to make sure I get all this down. I kind of always just go around and swoop, go around and swoop. I'm a swooper. Now we do have the solars in the forms which have that 45 degree angle and uh, a drop edge, but still sharp. So you couldn't do this with those. These are the dual drapes. And that's why I love the dual drapes. You can stack them if you want and get that rolled um, fountain -y kind of look. I'm just bending my red rib over the back of this. It's kind of weird when you go backwards and you're not used to it. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pointed end. I'm actually going to just slightly dampen it in a little bit of water or you could just dampen it with a sponge. And I'm going to come in where those, that top form is, where that top dual drape is, and just kind of press it in so you'll see that little step. And then I'm going to come down and press the bottom one in above the template because I want to see that want to see that little dip in there it's going to give me a little dish you see that that kind of goes on the bottom kind of comes whoop, and then into my template just to give it some added flair added flair now i'm going to go around this one more time just smoothing it all in and go around the bottom edge because that'll highlight and show me this gorgeous little farmhouse template and there would be my daughter calling me sorry about that guys all righty now we're going to cut this off 
Oh, whoops. I pushed the button too soon. I was just saying, now we're going to cut this off in the next video. Um, Jen, I am humbled that you are watching me from the emergency room, my dear. I certainly hope whatever it is, you get better very quickly and be back. Um, who is asking how thick it is? Peggy, that is over a quarter inch. What was that? What did you roll that out to? Uh, What's between a, a quarter and three eighths. Between a quarter and three eighths. Because I knew I was going to be using that texture, which would squish it down to about the quarter inch. If you can see that thickness there, I wanted this and see the ripple. Oh my gosh. I just uh, love it. Okay, let's cut this clay off and see what we've got. Well, I'm back. I am going to cut this off the template and then we're going to have a foot and handle party. What y'all came for, I'm sure. So I'm going to come in here and hit my template at a slight angle. I'm simply going to go around. I do want to slightly hold the top. I don't think it's going to move anywhere because it's cemented in, but it's not attached. So I'm just bringing it around. There. We cannot wait. And then there's all that extra yummy stuff, extra lusciousness. Now, I like to go around one one more time where I can see and really get these extras off so that when I go to sponge around there uh, it's very simple to sponge and uh, it only takes a second and it's amazing how well it cleans these edges up when you do this they're so much neater I think So in we go, which is why I don't worry too much on my first pass. It's not a horse race. Um, I just take my time because then I'm going to go back and really pat, clean it in, clean it up when I can actually see, you can't, but I can see the outside of this template. I mean, it's a full quarter inch thick. I don't have to worry about pushing it out of my way or anything like that. It's not foam. It's not gonna go over the edge, but look at how pretty that is now. So there I have it. I'm going to go ahead and just lightly, very lightly sponge around this outside because I'm going to hit that later. So that's really all I'm going to do here. <laughs> you see that? Boop, boop, boop. The boop, boop. Fancy schmancy. All right. Now I'm going to clean up my mess here and I will be back. And we're going to do something different on the foot. And we may or may not do a handle, but if we did, it would be the same. So I'll clean up. I'll be back. Okay. Boy, I can tell you, I did not realize how much you could hear my birds in the background. Um, unfortunately, I don't know how to muzzle them. So <laughs> they are just going to chirp in the background. Um, so... 
oh gosh, when my daughter, my daughter lives across the pasture and when she comes walking across, my largest conure, Cricket, um, he is a Nande conure, conure. For whatever reason, he sees her coming because he sits like in front of the window. He sees her coming and he, the only time he like squawks. And I mean, he squawks and squawks and squawks. And it's like, oh my gosh, Kristen must be coming over. Or she walks into my house and he goes crazy. I don't know if it's he loves her or if he hates her, but he just, ah! oh, it's amazing. And um, anyway, but I have two birds, Barb. I have two conures, Nande conure cricket and a um, pineapple conure tootie. And they both talk. Um, Barbara, yes. This is, oh, I dropped them all down there. I'll have to see if I can hold this up. This is the farmhouse template with the solar eclipse uh, dual drape forms. <laughs> I, they all fell over there where I can't reach them. I, I'm trying to use things that I know a lot of you guys have already and now start giving you more ideas. Um this little whoop de doo Now we've done that before. I've done like my heart. Is it over there? No. The heart with the drizzle. I have no idea where it is. But if you look back through the lives. Oh, you know, that was a slab to fab my membership class. Anyway, I did the whimsy hearts that way. Um, and it came up and it was such a gorgeous bowl. And um, I did a Whimsy Heart vase where I put the little form on top of a big form and then stood it up so it had the little form and the big form and put holes where the little form was and made a vase. That was really cute too. That's one of our classes. Um, anyway, so the moment you, a lot of you have been waiting for, hey, Jackie, hey, Deb. Um, and that is, what was that thing that Katie Donovan Freeman posted about yesterday or the day before? Let's take a look. We are going to have a foot and handle party. Okay, now for the fun. Now I have my extruder barrel. My die. Uh, we made this die. We uh, we will start carrying some specialty dies that we make. Um, they may be aluminum. They may be um, acrylic. We haven't decided. But I want to put my die in. And twist it on tight. So you see it's right there. Um, now. What I like to do is take my clay. I want to make sure it's nice and soft and that it's, I've squeezed it to be able to fit in this barrel. And I take my spray bottle and spray in there so that my little coil will whoops, slide right in there. Now the moment you've all been waiting for. The end of my extruder is this. Oh, look at this bad boy. It's heavy. I will tell you it's heavy. I'm gonna just stick this in here and twist it. Okay, which direction do I go? Let me put this in my lap. And just come up higher. There we go. And I'm going to twist this in. And I am going to do this. I'm going to pull the trigger. And look at the handle going in. Oh, whoops. I wasn't paying attention. It was already coming out. So I'm going to lay this. I'm going to lay this right here so that I can let this come out. And look at that. It just extrudes right out. And that's 
probably enough to go around that. So I'm going to use my cutter and just cut that right off. How's that for easy extruding? I also do take a piece of plastic and put this over the end of my extruder when I'm not using it so that the clay at the end does not dry out. I'm going to set this right here where I can easily get to it. But that, that is the um, battery powered extruder. How cool is that? Hopefully I extruded enough to fit on here and see how pretty that is. I'm going to go on the flat side and stick the flat side down. I just want to see, oh yes, I made, I made plenty, but look at what a cool foot that's going to be. It's going to look almost tree-like. To go with my texture so that's going to be plenty good so i'm going to take my knife i ran my knife through my slab roller last week <laughs> my little screws are sticking out but it still works and i'm going to take this at a slight angle because that gives me a bigger area to get in there so I'm going to take this, lay it upside down, and I am going to take my serrated rib and I'm simply going to come around as I'm spinning my banding wheel system, come around and score this really well. And then make sure I have the bottom up and then I'm going to score this really well. And then I'm just going to take plain water um, with a craft brush. I kind of, I've got my water sitting over here. I kind of dip it in and, and uh, kind of press it on my sponge just so I don't get too much. Woo! Forgot my sponge. And just get this nice and wet a little bit and then I'm going to come and do the same thing on my foot or on my battery powered extruded foot. There's all kinds of fun things, fun dyes, fun things you can do. All right, now I'm going to take this and I'm just going to set it over and press down as I go around. I want this nice and seated in there. <coughs> and I do want to score where these are going to attach. <coughs> and I do want to wet that because I want that to hold. And I think I want to score this side just a little more. There we go. Now, as I come around here, I'm going to press this down just like I did. And then I'm going to take and make sure I have a good shape, but I'm going to press these two together. I'm just kind of pressing in because I don't want to because they have that ripple there. I just want to keep that as much the same as possible so it doesn't show. 
and then I'm going to come around over here and looking up at my camera I want to see that I have this well shaped all the way around and now I'm going to lightly take my sponge but what a cool foot is that and how easy was that I'm going with my sponge below see that line right there on the outside I'm going below that line because I don't want to smear and mess up that line I have there because it's so cool and then I'm gonna go squeeze my sponge and go around this top what you would call coil I guess go around this top coil and then that will keep the integrity of this three ropes now one thing I have figured out is if I take a pointy end of a rib this is my rib I usually go around the outer edge I can come in where I connected the two and just lay that in the crease and completely hide where I connected them. You don't even see that because I just recreated the crease and then down here on the bottom and you can always come in and slightly up to round that back off and people are gonna wonder, how did you do that? So right in, right around, check my finger. All right, now I'm gonna take my brush that I watered it with, and I'm just gonna spin this right around the edge. And I wanna show you, here's, here's this piece that's left over. Boy, did I make a mess out of it. This is that die we did. And let me show you what you can do with it. First off, I'm gonna, because I threw it aside and scratched it all up, I'm gonna wet it just a little bit because I don't want it to crack on me. See how cute that is all the way around? Now, I'm going to take my hands. I'm going to take this and I'm going to twist it. And you can also lay it down and roll it and twist it. This little spot right here, I don't know if you can see that, was an air bubble. So I'm just going to take my thumb right over that and get that out but look at this look at this as a handle That right there would be a great, oops. I could put this on the back side and make it a great handle for this dish. But I just wanted to show you, this was just a scrap. And you can let this dry up like this if you mess up your lines, come in with a rib. And put it back in. But look at that. Look at that for a handle. Now, let me show you a couple other things. You can use any kind of dies. I'm going to stick to the one I have because what I was showing you is really 
how this baby works. Again, it's heavy. But what I do is I lay it on the table and I just pull the trigger and let this come out. I'm not going to waste a bunch of it, but because I'm going to use this on a, another project here in a minute. But I want to show you something. Whoops. Flipped it all over the floor. So here's this. Get that little air bubble covered. Get it pretty straight. You'll want to dry your hands then because you want to work with it clean. And then I pick up the sponge. It's another easy way to turn it into that braid. Look at that. Now, I'm going to show you another thing that we have going on here. I'm going to roll this across the top of this. And should roll it a couple more times. You see these little balls it now has? Little design that's in there. Now, I should have rolled it a couple more times for those little spots to go out, but you know, a quick, light touch of the rib, and they're gone. Look at that. Now, look at that fancy schmancy handle with the little balls in it. See that? Now you can turn that and then you can cut this off to whatever you would want. I'm going to go at a slight angle. And again, I can just take my finger, press right down, and I can shape this, or I can take a cookie cutter, or I can do whatever I want to shape these hands, this. But look at this handle. That could be a real fancy schmancy handle, or that could be a fancy schmancy handle. And did you see how fast it was? Um, there are so many things, so many dies. I could take these and uh, twist these leftovers. I have, I have some leaves over there that I used, um, that I made about three years ago and made these curly feet. <clears throat> so I could make little feet like this. I could also Put those on there where they were, will curl out as feet or I could do both sides and I could make little bitty handles if it was on a vase or a tumbler or a mug probably more of a vase that I could make a little bitty cute little that might look good on that that might be a perfect little cute size but 
This isn't all about handles and feet. This was all about, I wanted to show you the slick um, battery powered extruder. For those of you that have issues squeezing that trigger, this is the way to go. Um, I okay, what'd you think of that? So several things about this, this we call extruder, Home Depot people would call cock guns, yes. So it it comes in two different sizes. There is a um, a, 20 a 20-inch, a 20-ounce, 20 20 ounce, and a 10-ounce. And a 10-ounce, so the, a shorter one and a longer it, one. It's just like the heck, it's just like the Okay, extruder. so yeah, and that's just like, you know, like my little um, Nidec extruder is short and my Scott Creek is long. These come in two lengths as well. Um, they are heavy, but like I said, I lay mine on the table and it just shoots it right out. So where, why did I do this? Um, because getting into the colored clay, you extrude and extrude and extrude and extrude and extrude some more. And it was very hard on my wrist. Can you tell I've been working with running rolling pins today? I'm all yellow, but it's very hard on my wrist squeezing. Um, now, if you're just going to do a few things here and there, then certainly just use a regular extruder. Um, but I will tell you this, the Scott Creek, the long Scott Creek is $200. So if I'm going to spend $200 for a long extruder, I think I would go with the battery powered for that same $200. This does happen to be a Milwaukee, which is a very good brand of tool. Again, it comes in two sizes. I don't get anything for this. I am not an affiliate. I don't do that affiliate like with Home Depot or any of that kind of stuff. But for arthritis, for something you're going to use a lot, if you were going to buy a Scott Creek, which I bought a Scott Creek, a Nidec, and this one all at the same time. And I will tell you, I've no longer touched my Nidec one, and I have never, ever used my Scott Creek. So if anybody wants a Scott Creek long extruder that's brand spanking new, let me know. Um, I will sell you mine. It's never been out of the box. So let me explain on here. Oh, wait. I think there's another video. I, well, the other video is showing me flipping this. Let me do that real quick, and then I'll explain this. Well, we are back, and I believe this is set up enough to flip it, but still enough to be able to add handles if I choose. I'm gonna grab me a template to flip this. Flip this over and take this off, and let's see what we got here. Okay, that popped right off. That's a good thing. Before we reveal, oh, I'm dying to reveal this one. Before we reveal, I'm just gonna lightly come around and get the little crumbs off. Oh, I, I gotta say, go back and rewatch the cutting and the, the doing of this um, edge because look at using that lip template or rim template, whichever you choose, look at the perfectness of that rim. And I love it. Um, I don't want to stick my fingers in that. So I'm going to use my plucker doodad. I'm going to unscrew it, put the little rubber doodad in the hole and then screw in the little knob until it's tight. You will feel it when it's tight. Now what I like to do is just lightly make sure I lightly, lightly, lightly press out right there and look at that. It just pops right out. Oh my goodness. Look at this. Oh my. Okay. I'm going to set that one down and because I definitely don't want to dig into that one. Again, pluck or doodad. I'm gonna 
whoops, put my little rubber piece. I'm going to spin it right in there. This is one of my old forms. The hole was not quite as big, but when I screw this in, it's going to go right down. And I want to make sure I just lightly release those edges. Doesn't take much. And out it comes. And oh my gosh. Um, let me get some of this. Uh, Cornstarch off. <laughs> and look at this plate. Oh, look at the little raccoon sneaking through the fence planks. So let me show you what I came up with on a handle and decide if we want to put it on. Okay, so while I was waiting for this, I created a second handle to match the one that we had done. And then I decided I need to make that a wood grain. And all I did was I took my little serrated rib and I simply scratched some wood in there. That's all I did was scratched all around it to make some wood texture. And I still hadn't decided if I want to put a handle on, but I think, holy cow. Oh, I think, I love it. I think it needs, I think it needs those handles. We're gonna attach those handles. So, all I'm gonna do, grab my serrated red, and I'm gonna score this really, really well. And score this one really, really well. The curve. And I'm going to press that in from behind and be very careful not to squish the texture from the front. And uh, I am super, super excited about this. And from underneath, I'm going to get the excess slip off of there. And what do you think of that handle? Oh my, that wood grain. What an idea that was. Put it under plastic, put a weight bag in the center, and Rocky <laughs> will be peaking for a very long time. Okay, I sped that part up because we've already gone over a little bit and I wanted to show y'all something. So, I have put my little Nidec on there, which is still really a Shimpo. Um, I think they changed companies or something. The little barrel of that. Now, I didn't put a die or the clay in it, but I just wanted to show you that when I squeeze the trigger, the plunger is going to go in. See it going in. You would just have to be very cautious that, because this plunger is going to be longer, that you want to, when you feel it hit the top, I don't want to stick my finger in there, but when you feel it hit the shorter barrel, that you stop so you don't break. But um, you can interchange. So if you're just doing something small and you don't need a big, long barrel, um, you can, you can change out if you already have one of these shorter ones. If you um, already have, uh, or if you're deciding to do this and you don't know if you want the long barrel or the short barrel, and again, you already have a short barrel, get the long one because you can trade out for the shorter times. Um, although, my thought would be that if you got the shorter one, it might be a little less expensive and if you have a long barrel Scott Creek, that the long barrel should also fit on this. That's a 
plunger was for except for yes mr wilson was correct except for the plunger would be too short and would never plunge out the whole one so forget the last thing i said <laughs> but so go over the long one and switch out your short one if you need to so kids that is what i have for this evening any thoughts any questions um Melody asked what? It was, it was Stacy. Asked, are these solar eclipse form or push bites that you found? Stacy, those were my solar eclipse. I dropped them over there on the floor. I can't read them. They were the solar eclipse dual drapes. I use the dual drapes for almost everything because they have the rounded tops. Let me hold this up again. They have the rounded. So see in the bottom here, it's nice and rounded. You don't get that deep crease and because I stacked them see how it's got that little whoop de doo in there but there's no harsh line um it's just a nice rounded whoop now and you can take you could actually if you wanted to do if you had a huge slab of clay you could take a whole seven piece set and they would do this and you could put the clay over the top and do it in. And you would have this great big bowl that would go whoop, do whoop, do whoop, do whoop. It would be awesome. Oh, here, guys. I got to show you. Ooh, they got their eyes up. Oh, 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 oh. I scared her. Him, her. They have their eyes open. Can you see? Oh, 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 oh. oh sorry. Sorry. These two are from the same litter. This little worm, here, take this one. <laughs> this little runt, he's the runt of the litter, and he is just the sweetest. He's just a baby. He's, you saw how tiny he was to the other ones? He's the runt. Um, and he's just the sweetest little thing. Anyway, um, there's our babies. Um, let's see. It's a beautiful piece. I had ideas about your in the woods stamps too. Not sure that's what it's called. Deep in the woods. You're correct, Jerry Lynn. Puppy love. Yes, Stacy. Um, got my dog's attention. Oh, I bet it did. And yes, puppy breath. 21 of them puppy breaths we've got going on here. Um, anyhow, that's what I have for you tonight. Here is our, our... <laughs> Whiskey barrel. Now, I have called it whiskey barrel. Um, for those of you that are not drinkers, it's still just a name. I apologize. I, I am not a drinker either, but tell me that doesn't look like a whiskey barrel. Um, I just could not, could not resist. Um, and this gives it, let me put it on this because I'm going to end up ruining this. Doing the forms that way gives it this little lift that really gives it with the farmhouse template really gives it that barrel look. And I didn't even try, but look how the band hit like right at the little curve there and went perfect. And that just happened. So I, I didn't even make that happen. It just happened. But there you have it. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, those of you... Those of you that are my slabbers, I was going to have you jump over into the other group because I was going to show you or tell you something. I don't remember what it was now. So everybody have a wonderful evening and I will see you guys all in a few days. Thank you. Oh, and remember, anybody that's here for more in-depth projects, you're welcome to join the Fab Slab to Fab Society and get more of those. I will talk to you later. Barbara, I was glad you were able to make it too. I know you wanted to see that extruder. <laughs>